Joe, Zoe Saldar commands everything from a distant forward operating post in Syria. While Bobby, Jill Wagner and Two Cups, James Jordan keep their rifle sights trained on an element of insurgent fighters massing on their perimeter, and Tucker, LaMonica Garrett keeps her .50 ready. Joe is in cell phone contact with her asset, who is embedded nearby in a heavily defended ISIS compound. There is a problem. Her cover has been revealed, and she need transportation out of there, which is first not regarded as an issue. As the threat outside their fence escalates and Bobby and two cups engage, Joe orders an A-10 Warthog airstrike, allowing her squad to board their choppers and fly to the compound. Joe has options even if her asset is brought into the light and thoroughly compromised. I'll never say no, Bobby says over radio, the crew will battle until their master orders them to stop. However, the opportunities have passed. Joe summons a Reaper drone to defend the remainder of her people and the integrity of this clandestine CIA operation once her asset is destroyed. Cleared hot. And the UAV launches a missile at the compound as her operator remains inside. Cruz Manuelos, Laisla de Oliveira works in a burger restaurant in a small town four years before the events of the opening scene. She returns home after her shift to her lover, who is emotionally and physically violent to her, hitting her in the eye when she rebuffs him. This is the final straw for Cruz, who attempts to flee the next morning by striking her partner in the face with a frying pan. Unfortunately, he pursues her. Cruz is only able to break away from her lover when she enters a Marine Corps recruitment center and the Marine stands up to him. Cruz, knowing he would continue to pursue her and motivated by the Marine who saved her, chooses to enroll. I gotta get any cleaner. Okay. They here for you? He's saying you assaulted him today. What about tonight? In the park. They are good. Cruz immediately demonstrates that she is both incredibly intelligent and physically gifted throughout training, outperforming many of the guys in the program. She meets with an officer, who tells her she has the potential to be a solider who makes a real difference. Fucking call me sir! Yeah. That's right. The fucking beach! There's no stopping you. Turn on the Rasbab score? She got nothing enough. I want to talk to her. Your test scores are unusual. Most men don't. 22 polo. 100 in high school, sir. All the things that these tests say you shouldn't hear. Hated the world. So no family. What does the word Marine mean to you? Why are you here? Push through these doors and... You're the strong. We protect the weak. The duty personnel and the armed forces. They all, I think you could be one of those few. We return to the present, sure. where Joe is being updated on what happened to her asset. She meets with Donald Westfield, Michael Kelly, a CIA official, and her immediate boss, Caitlin Mead, Nicole Kidman. Westfield interrogates Joe over not knowing her asset had a tattoo, telling her that the next time she should inspect every inch of anybody she intends to utilize as part of the program. Caitlin tries to convince Joe that she can't assist the asset who lied to her, but Joe is clearly taken aback. I've never seen you try. Whatever you put in it, and I put chief. Chief to go. Joe takes advantage of his return to the United States to visit his family, but it immediately becomes evident that things are complex with her family. Kate, Hannah Love Lanier, her eldest daughter, informs her father Neil, Dave Annabel that she despises having Joe around. While speaking with Joe, Neil tells her that it is preferable if she phones first so that he can inform her on what has been going on with the girls. It's not just Joe's connection with her girls that is strange, she and Neil both briefly discuss whether or not they are dating. Neil confesses he is, but just to maintain some human contact while Joe is away. 
She's in a tour in Afghanistan. She is a fucking gangster. She's a fucking... She's been in insertion training for six years out. Joe doesn't seem troubled by this, and it's evident Sergeant. that the two of them still love one another despite their unconventional relationship situation. Joe's stay at home will not last long, since she will soon be recruiting another lioness. I'm not an officer. I'm not done that anymore. Linus' team was first formed in his hand over some muzzle. What we do now is locate targets. I mean, leads us to the target. I think if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. No, ma'am. Prove it. She instantly points her finger in the direction of Cruz. Joe believes she can more than hold her own in a battle against a male soldier. Then, when she interviews Cruz and has her stripped down to check for tattoos, she clearly admires Cruz's passion and resilience. She informs her that she has been accepted into the program. Who's the target? Who's my mark? Where can you spend in Baghdad? You know Mary? That's our relationship. And turn the fucking plane around. I'd like to know the person responsible. And there is no saving you. You can trust me to do that. On the journey to Kuwait, Joe informs Cruz that it will be his responsibility to approach a lady named Alia, Stephanie Noor, who is tied to a high-value target whose location is unknown. She also meets the rest of Joe's squad, which includes Randy, Austin Hebert, Tex, Jonah Wharton, and Tucker, LaMonica Garrett in addition to Bobby and Two Cups. That over there is tough. Why Two Cups? <laughs> two Cups is something. You need to know where to sit. Dude, he uh, looks like Matt Dillon. So your name's Cruz, huh? When do we start? This family keeps a question. You're here. I don't trust. We wake up when we feel like it. Here we go. I'm a fucking Marine. <laughs> she cheats at cards. Cruz is welcomed by the squad after some ball busting and beverages. Joe wakes Cruz up the next morning and tells her she needs to get moving so she can begin her quest and meet Alia while she is shopping. Cruz is confused as she attempts to recall the specifics of her given background, while also suffering from a hangover. When Cruz finally meets Alia, she is asked to continue shopping with her. Sorry. Yeah. A woman can buy just to be given to you. You have family here? Here to find a husband, can girls and makeup. And to is the ladder. It's across the street. What's your name? Zara. Hello, this will be fun. Joe, who is observing from a distance, says that Cruz has arrived. She's in. She is in. The beating, the second episode, begins with Joe meeting Caitlin Mead, Nicole Kidman, the CIA agent to whom she reports. The two talk about Joe's most recent operation, which targeted Kamal Amrohi, a businessman with links to terrorist organizations. Joe informs that her new asset, Cruz Manuelos, has made contact with her target, Alia Amrohi. Joe has now relocated Cruz to Paris, France, and she is currently residing in New York City. Although Meade grants Joe complete control of the operation, she warns the station head against having her assets so near to the target. Later, Meade inquires about Joe's family and their well-being, hinting a family tragedy. Joe's older daughter, Kate, gets into a brawl at school after being racially harassed. Neil, Dave Annabel, Joe's spouse and a doctor, is coping with a four-year-old daughter who has been diagnosed with serious brain cancer. Neil is compelled to bring up Kate from school after a physical incident with her daughter's father. Neil chastises Kate for her misdeeds and confiscates her phone. When Joe arrives home, she learns about the incident and calms down the household before spending the night with no, Neil. She can't survive if her body responds to further treatment. I want a second opinion. I highly recommend you get one. This pain. Spend as much time with her. Oh, mother... Fuck you! There is no excuse to... Have this conversation with a white man. With a... Before I am anything else. Do you... The hate out of someone, Kate. No. Mom, he took my phone! I'll get us another. Here? How was your day? Drinks with a classmate from a plastic surgeon. They was women's breasts all day. But he didn't want his patients to die. Joined a reconstructive surgery. This homecoming queen in face first. Face, her cheekbones, her nose. Died in recovery. They fucking quit. 
my patients aren't going to see their 18th birth. Can I have my phone? I'm getting a divorce. I gotta stay because I want to go live with him. However, due to professional emergencies, the pair is soon forced to separate ways. Important jobs, they come with a price. Who knows the thing that's happened to your father today? Parenting. I can feel it. Woman to you're gonna be a woman soon. Little. You'll find out what happened. Of your luck that she celebrated. You get into another fight, that's cool. How's that for parenting? Tonight, honey? I think sandwich. All right, chef. <laughs> Baby, I'll let gluten off this counter. Hey, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, as Cruz goes for a run in the middle of the night, she is stolen from her apartment. A bunch of thugs holds her prisoner and tortures her. Joe says she is behind Cruz's kidnapping after the men savagely beat him up. Pedal to the metal, buddy, let's go. Oh, sorry, fly from there. Right. Kids are used to it already. Hey, kiddo, I gotta go. I have... Need some emergency drugs today. I don't need... How do you have a gun? Protect the people I work with. Who to do it? They need everyone to do it. Cruz is undergoing a seer, survival, evasion, resistance, and escape test. Joe warns that the assignment she has been given would eventually expose Cruz's cover, at which time she will be kept captive and tortured for information. As a result, Joe wishes to determine Cruz's breaking point in order to determine how much time she has to conduct a rescue attempt. We don't have to worry about that with you. He's dead. Bad. And shot. I bet you were good at it, though. Here you are, proving how strong you are. Hunger. But you know, can't be broke. Give it to me. We're spending her movement. That'll be the thing that breaks her. I trust you far as I. So what was his name? You want to hear me? Mother's at work. You better up. After briefly discussing Cruz's background, Joe abandons her for another round of torture and physical assault. However, the exam is stopped short by one of the cops on duty. Cruz, according to Joe, will be on a suicide mission, thus knowing her breaking point is critical. She eventually abandons the test and takes Cruz to the safe home where the rest of the Lioness program crew resides. We're going to make cure. What do you know about him, Rocky? We have no egalomaniacs, religious extremists. His brand of terrorism is fuel. Never the half a trillion dollars his found. Look at me. You must find a way to survive. It will take. The miss will never go through that again. Put you through. I see you. It does if one of you motherfuckers. Get away! Get away! 
practicing CQB in the fucking seat all? One for me. We don't do. Well, you got mine. Marie. Shower. This shower in the room. Fuck happened to her. Cruz is assigned to reside with the rest of the task group lead by Bobby in the episode's final act. Cruz arrives at the home beaten and injured, having lost trust in Joe's ways. Cruz showers and drinks with her new teammates before saying she was subjected to a seer exam. The harshness of the exam and its unofficial nature enrage Bobby, who resolves to advocate for Cruz. Bobby and her team hunt down the policemen who administered the seer exam and locate them at a nearby pub. Bobby and her friends engage in a bar brawl with the cops before one of them discloses that Bobby's employer, Joe, has already signed off on the test. When Cruz receives an unexpected phone call from Aliyah, her mark, the gang is compelled to abandon the bar fight. Alia tells that she is in Atlanta and is looking forward to seeing Cruz. Cruz, on the other hand, tries to escape the meeting by pretending she was in a vehicle accident. Nonetheless, Aliyah persuades Cruz to see her, and they agree on a meeting location. Cruz seemed to have kept her cover and become close to Aaliyah based on their brief phone conversation. Cruz's mark has begun to trust her, which might lead to contacts with Aaliyah's inner circle. Cruz drives to the spot in Chesapeake, Maryland, after receiving final instructions from Joe over the phone. Cruz, on the other hand, is very concerned about how and what he should say to Alia and her friends. Joe boosts her profile by encouraging Cruz to answer questions with questions, and forcing the buddies to chat about their lives because it is all they care about. She also informs her that her automobile will be bugged and tracked. Joe meets with Caitlin to talk about the mission. They discuss Alia's access to Asmari's resources. Caitlin believes it's a deliberate ruse to catch the mole. Kudra Petrol even owns the house Cruz is heading to. Joe has prepared an evacuation squad in case something horrible happens at the celebration. As she walks out of the restaurant, Joe is accosted by Kyle, who appears to be an old acquaintance from her time in Afghanistan. Joe is noticeably shaken upon seeing him. Her step is tense because she knows he's after something. Kyle's squad is planning an operation to intercept trafficking Syrian people at the border. His target is in jail and being moved across state lines. But if word gets out that the prisoner is a snitch, he won't make it out alive. He devises an unthinkable plan, pause the transfer in the middle and extract the mark. He requests Joe's squad for this purpose, and she looks at him in disbelief. She decides to give him three members of her team after much thought, but she wants them back within two days. You made it! It's my friend Zara. That fucking hair went! You're in the fucking pool. I'll explain the whole soap opera. He did what the man does and fucked some little blonde together. Doesn't seem to bother him. Poor date Sam. Cruz is subjected to intensive examination from Asmari's staff, as predicted. They immediately do background checks and assign a man to her for the party. Alia welcomes Cruz and introduces her to the circle of friends. It's amazing to see how they react to Cruz. They aren't as intrigued since they believe Alia has rescued yet another stray. When Alia takes Cruz shopping for a bikini, they refer to her as her next project. Alia is taken aback when she sees the bruises on Cruz's body after she shifts. She is alarmed rather than suspicious, and she quickly summons her doctor to examine Cruz. Joe notifies her squad of Kyle's side mission, and three volunteers to go. The remaining members of Joe's crew are worried because they believe Cruz's cover is about to be broken. And they are not mistaken. Dr. Bramley looks at her and knows she wasn't in a car accident. He suspects domestic violence and feels bound to report it to the authorities. While the squad prepares to depart, Joe wants to give Cruz time to persuade Bramley differently. Joe's wager pays off when Cruz successfully escapes the situation. Ali sends all of her pals to the city and goes for a walk on the beach with Cruz. Her demeanor toward the troubled Middle East area is evident. She despises their rigid regulations and lack of wealth beyond the confines of the palace she lives in. Essan, her boyfriend, works in Manhattan, which is ideal for Ali. She also cautions Cruz to avoid Malika and Nashua, her pals since they try to undermine Ali's new friendships. Joe returns home and stumbles in on Kate trying to have sex with a boy. She contacts his mother and tells her what he's been up to. Kate throws typical adolescent tantrums against Joe, oblivious to the absurdity of her argument. Joe carefully listens, not responding to Kate's provocation. 
Neil is on the porch, conducting a surgical procedure via video. Joe tells him about Kate, and Neil shocks her with the rules he and Kate had made around such indulgences. Joe requested that he confer with her, but he correctly points out that she is never at home. Meanwhile, emotions are rising in Maryland. Cruz is unable to sleep and encounters an intoxicated Sammy in the kitchen. He attempts to push himself on her, but she easily repels Sammy. He does not give up and continues to pound on her door. Cruz equip herself with a pen, but security notices it on the CCTV and arrests Sammy. Kyle and Joe's squad are in Texas, preparing to carry out their assignment. They're shocked to find that the mission hasn't been approved by any agency. Nonetheless, they proceed. The task is successful since they are able to remove the mark. See if we can get this guy to pass we Up with that EMP. Ah, oh, fuck me. You can report. Let's go. The men abandon their vehicles and gear in a barn before moving to another vehicle. Kyle promises the guys that the media will not cover this story because the administration would not allow it to be broadcast. This makes them appear weak and inept. Eshen sends Sammy home the next morning. His actions last night assured that he was no longer welcome in the group. The episode concludes on a tense note. Joe is groaning in pain after discovering that Aliyah has surprised Cruz by taking her to a fixed base operator. These are firms that provide private jet charter services. The final destination is currently unclear. However, Cruz cleverly informs Joe of the plane's registration number, and Joe ensures that they are being followed by a jet. 9109 is a type of... Ah, you're going to be so much fun! She thinks all her feet. Max, she done. Now we're out, no destination yet. It's getting more and more obvious in Special Ops, Lioness how much time Joe's personal life has been bailed out by his career. In Episode 4, The Choice of Failure, she drives her work family forward with detached, anything it takes, efficiency, resulting in Joe, Tucker, Two Cups, and Randy languishing below decks in a yacht parked off a Hamptons beach. Meanwhile, her home family grows and changes around the absent space within it. Cruz takes calls from her husband Neil, where they break the ice with the measured tones of their professional lives, while Joe presses her to remain unwaveringly focused on her mission and challenges her to forge bonds of trust on the spot as Alia and her rich kid crew party their way through Long Island. So when the worst occurs, Kate and her pals get into a fatal vehicle accident, Neil and Joe are limited to talking about the missing person's practicalities. I'm not going to let her know you're coming in case you can't get away. Covert operations and active parenting are a volatile combination. Due to severe injury to her leg, Kate will need surgery to reduce brain swelling. Still, that's not the worst of it all. In addition to the fact that one of Kate's pals in the car did not survive, her pregnancy was also discovered during her ER visit. She is 14 years old. Neil breaks the news while juggling his roles as a doctor and a father. You have a pregnancy. You breached our lad's agreement. It is quite probable that the pregnancy was ended by the trauma you endured. If the fetus managed to survive all of this, though, you're going to have to make a rather important choice. You can at least use the lesson and the repercussions to your advantage now. It's impossible to predict how this conversation would have turned out. If Joe had been present, how would things have turned out? Instead, she is watching Cruz's activities for work-related family matters when Neil calls from a swanky Montic pub crowded with ostentatious financial bros. Additionally, Joe's two selves are visible to us as they dance across Zoe Saldana's face like a developing storm. Over Langley, another storm system is now developing. When Kyle orchestrated an unapproved CIA operation on U.S. soil to remove a cartel HVT from the back of a county sheriff's vehicle using Joe's Lion SQRF assets, he may have done so with impunity. However, the appearance of Kyle, Two Cups, and Tucker's faces on surveillance film from the Border Patrol is causing a backlash among the employers. 
Michael Kelly is making just his second appearance in Lioness, but as Deputy CIA Director Byron Westfield, he's in a fairly wonderful grade A asshole boss mode. With Westfield and Caitlin Mead, it seemed that Kyle was already under strict control. However, if his Texas attempt fails to yield the anticipated avenue for importing Al-Qaeda personnel, his overreach may put Lioness in danger just when Joe needs it most. Cruz keeps portraying Zara in that universe as a naive college student. While Alia and Zara's conversations get closer, Alia acknowledges that an arranged marriage never takes her desires into account. The friend group still doesn't fully trust Zara, and she is constantly watched by Alia and her fiancé Essan's protection detail. Cruz's attempt to blend in and flirt in Montic turns into a rescue mission for the Lioness squad after she was robbed at the bar by a jerk. But now that her assailant has been found and neutralized, the issue is whether she has been compromised. Is Cruz's disguise as Zara strong enough to get her back into the undercover? Joe informs Mead, we've never had someone this close to a tier 1 target before. Furthermore, the crew will be able to adequately cover Alia in Dubai if Cruz's information about the wedding being held there is reliable. Zara might not have the group's trust. Still, Alia appears to. After the Rufius scare, Cruz will be reinserted, returning to her Mark's side and dancing on the point of a danger. What we're doing is sacrificing our kids. We're exchanging them for careers. Both Joe and Neil feel that the integrity of their lives as parents is being jeopardized by their career decisions. And Joe is in awe of Kai T. L. N. Mead's ability to balance being a mother and a full-time employee of the agency. Since we already know that Mead hates her ex-husband, there is unresolved tension in that circle as well. She leaves the operation in Montic, heading home to the hospital in preparation for Kate's upcoming surgery, but it's unclear what sort of rapid cure her presence will bring about. From Montic to Morocco, Joe's work family is able to shift and pivot with an elasticity that is unmatched. They are primed, positioned, and prepared to act. However, Joe's life with Neil and their girls, as well as resources from the other side, are inexorably drawn to that type of reaction. She is unable to be in two places at once and be productive in both. However, based on the discussions we've heard, that's the false equivalence she and her husband have created, and they've been determined to cooperate with for a while. There must be a sacrifice made. Additionally, Joe has shown greater interest in her work than in making sacrifices, at least thus far. After the shambles in the Hamptons, we open on cruise the next morning. She has no memory of what transpired after she was drugged, and we immediately squirm and giggle inappropriately at Tucker saying, don't worry, we got there just in time to stop that guy and give him the old special op stomp. We're loading up. How you feel? I don't remember anything. About this last night? I don't remember. Residues or something? No, no. We didn't get nowhere. Where is going? Marine, I'm not going to lie to you about this. Let's get the hell out of here. Joe and Caitlin arrive at the hospital just in time to hear the doctor's announcement. Kate's operation went well, and her femur has been salvaged. They're not sure how it will harm her in the long run. It also appears that her body rejected the pregnancy, allowing everyone to breathe a sigh of relief without upsetting anybody in America. Joe wishes to be present when Kate awakens. Can she please have two hours? Yeah, Caitlin confirms. But you can't have all three. That is a nice excellent line. Kidman delivers like a pro. Saldana has plenty of space to cook, and she does. You believe it when she gets through to Kate in a manner Neil couldn't in the previous episode. Joe's thoughts appear to be typical of a network TV dad teaching their child a lesson, with a dash of jingoistic nonsense tossed in for good measure. You are sacrificing your time with me so I can save the country, and so on. But there's an emotional intelligence to her comments, a mix of compassion and sorrow. Your mom's a soldier, she continues, almost as if she's withholding the whole meaning but expressing it regardless. Life crept up on you and bit you. And now I'm only here to advise you. Joe and Caitlin head over to HQ for another spicy brief with Westfield and Kyle after a quick hug from younger daughter Charlie. Did we really need this younger daughter in here? And an awkward, I love you. I love you too asterisk, but only after you've pointed out that I didn't say it back initially. I'm sorry. Do you know what's gonna happen to my back? I'm feeling much. They were gonna be back in a few days. Mama! Hi. They're, um, they're taking her up to her room. When was the last time you were lucky? In the alphabet in Russian. Oh, in Russian. Spies one first grader at a time. Okay, see you soon. Be careful. Bigger. Oh. 
quickly when I can. When Kyle claims that he did not break U.S. Code 1385, limiting their capacity to operate on U.S. land with his degree in constitutional law, Caitlin is the one who brings the heat. It's for us, right? You, you guys call yourselves? I don't give a shit. What's happening? is set up in the hangar. You got couches, cable TV. Team, team, when you fucking hang me. Intel better fucking be spot on. That's what I say. I yell, you can feel my fucking breath. Well, C-1385 relates specifically to... Keep giving answers to questions he has... Actually, for you, the intel's good. You keep Kyle answering leave. questions he hasn't even asked, so shut the fuck up. When we want to hear you talk, we will tell you to fucking speak. According to Westfield, the intelligence is actionable. As a result, the action, however evil, is rewarded. Kyle's cartel mole has them lined up with six Islamic terrorist notches they can all add to their belts at a highly monitored safe house in San Antonio. Joe receives the biggest smack on the wrist for violating Westfield's authority. Ops are planned here, not on the back of a fucking napkin, Westfield adds, as if that were ever true. Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio is the next stop. The crew has already arrived, suiting up and stuff, showed up like they owned the place hours earlier, former grunts reaping the benefits of the jet-setting assassin's life everywhere they can, and Joe immediately clocks crews at the weapons bench. What exactly is she doing here? She can't be on the news coming from a safe place. I was told there are six targets in this house, Bobby explains to Joe. We're just six with you. What are we doing with fair fighting now? Nice. The idea is that this is a two-squad job, at a minimum, and they need crew so they don't have to rely on San Antonio SWAT. It's not what they do. There are a lot of rounds fired at San Antonio SWAT in this incident, bro. It appears to be aggressive. Joe grudgingly agrees, and Kyle explains everything. Their targets are expected to arrive in the safe house soon, and they will arrive around 4 a.m. One four-person team will enter from the front, while another will enter from the back. It's a non-negotiable capture mission. Or it's meant to be until the targets show up at the safe house wearing explosive vests. This way station appears to be the last destination for these people. So the aim now is to discreetly take them all out in the safe house. As Caitlin informs an FBI agent, there is no time to run this up the flagpole and engage Homeland Security. The job now is to immediately eliminate the threat, get the bomb squad in there, evacuate the area, and explode the devices in place. He's trying to protect her, you're gonna get killed. You're on. Yes, ma'am. Go. Cruz wins the round after attacking a suicide bomber in the safe house, taking him out moments as he places his thumb on the explosives. A local cop tells Joe, well played, agent, as he walks away. It's not a game, sir, she says. Joe sees herself at a crossroads with her profession, the position she's chosen for herself. However, the intelligence is still actionable, the nagging hellish truth encased in a web of falsehoods. Is everything too little, too late? One special op concludes precisely in time for the other to reappear. Inviting our daughters over for dinner. Where? I'm going through Mexico using the cartels. I'm going to take a shower. Pain was pretty bad last night, so up to most the lesser of all evils. Yeah. Believe it or not, I've had worse. The Baltimore Joe and my marriage to the fuck. NFL Network replays games in the You are the perfect woman. Cruz needs to reconnect with Alia, who is still relaxing on the beach in the Hamptons. Alia politely requests a FaceTime contact, and I'm not sure about you, but this was my first indication of a love desire on her behalf. We are Lady and the Tramp, you and I.
she's also shown herself to be a Disney adult. Aside from that, this twist shed some explanation on Alia's conduct, her cautious emotional posturing surrounding her engagement, as well as the way she pursues new friends and spars with her allocated social group. Personal need has honed her instincts for survival and smart risk-taking, making her a savvy operator in her circles. She and Cruz are meeting via a window of opportunity that will only grow increasingly dangerous for both of them. Palma de Mallorca. I want you to get me times, get me numbers. It has to be. I know. Okay, have you spoken with State? Because... Yeah. She's on the move. Uh, this is happening right now. Uh, you want... I need you to set up in country. I'll get someone to come. Nothing. When the seventh episode of Special Ops, Lioness kicks off, everyone at Langley is on telephones. Byron, Caitlin, and Joe are all scrambling to make plans to assure the success of their plot to eliminate Amrohi. Because of the urgency of the issue, Caitlin advises Byron not to go via the normal procedures. If you tell Spanish military, then they'll have to f house with a senator telling us how to fight. It is over before it's begun. It's already launched. And there's no way we can stop it. Call her fucking cell phone. Because it'll get her killed. There's really no means to abort. Not a second. Going to Mallorca whether we like it or not. It's in success. Or mission failure. They can't. To prepare a squad in Mallorca, the trio must use their personal resources. Even inside the car, being escorted about by a private bodyguard, Alia doesn't feel safe, and she informs Cruz how the affluent are targets of the poor, despite the fact that her dad is the world's top financier for terrorists. Marriage is a contract, whether he worries. And the oil business is a dirty one. Honest is never the date. But for me, we show up, we have a party, we have a feast and come home. Someone tries to snatch me off the street. He's called her strings. If you're pretty enough, they take you to. Khadna awal alam in days. The world inside the world. Special. And I'm going to show it to you. Alia leads Cruz to a high end clothing boutique, where the women burst champagne bottles and talk about their morning kisses before getting a bit more personal. When they are interrupted, the women hire a hotel suite and begin a passionate romance session. This was a nine? Yeah. She'll be just outside if you need any. Oh. <laughs> well, don't look at the press. The world is in a world. Okay. Yes, try this one. Shoes. One. Yeah, try the lavender one. Do you think about this morning? Yeah. Maybe. I'm right outside if you need me. This is not the place. They do know a place. Maybe. Crew sobs afterwards, feeling bad about what she is going to do. She truly believes she is in love and texts Joe to arrange a rendezvous. Joe had already requested that Kyle follow Cruz until she could get someone else on her. Kyle allows Cruz to enter her room, and Joe enters shortly after. Kyle has been stationed two floors below, listening to every sharp breath the women take. Cruz gets out of bed three hours later while Alia is sleeping, and goes into the bathroom to text Joe that she wants to meet her. Alia approaches her as she walks towards the door and inquires as to why she is going. Her newest best buddy responds that they have no future together. She enters Kyle's room two stories below, followed by Joe a few seconds after. Cruz confirms our concerns and reveals her feelings for Alia, because she hasn't been prepared for a circumstance in which she must sleep with a woman who is the first to care for her and then murder the woman's father. Joe tells her of Cruz's decision to become a mariner and how wicked Ali's father is. Joe challenges her recruit about whether she would do anything to Osama bin Laden's son in order to murder his father, and Cruz recognizes the gravity of her situation. Furthermore, 
Joe dispels the young lioness assumption that Alia is in love with Cruz by stating that Cruz is nothing more than a final hurrah for her before she is forced to take on the job of baby maker and baby rearing after marriage. Cruz embodies Alia's desire for independence. Joe's rousing indictment seemed to be having an impact on Cruz. Joe tells her that Amrohi funds practically all terrorist actions throughout the world during the home run stretch. I get it. You have no friend. You have a purpose. She made you feel that. And I'm wrong. Baby maker going to a compound in Riyadh to get pregnant. You have killed conflict in the Middle East since 9-11. Target we've uncovered since Bin Laden. Can do that. We'll break her. Cruz returns to the room, where Alia is anxiously awaiting her. Cruz switches off the broadcast and tells her she can't accompany her to Mallorca. Alia confirms that her father will not be attending the wedding. He is going to be in Riyadh since he cannot risk revealing his face in public in such a casual manner. Cruz restarts the transmission after hearing this. Joe and Kyle, who were about to flee in a panic, decide to stay and listen to the audio. Cruz quickly departs the hotel, and Joe invites her to meet him at the base, where Caitlin awaits for them. Aliya had urged Cruz to join her to Riyadh, but Cruz declined when Aliya stated that the wedding could not be cancelled. Her father will murder her if she makes such an appeal. Cruz will now fly to Barcelona, accompanied by Kyle. Joe and Caitlin debate on whether Cruz and the mission should be continued. Joe, on the other hand, agrees to do everything Caitlin orders. Joe and Caitlin barrage Cruz with interrogation and allegations at the operations base. They are furious that Cruz put the operation at danger for her sentiments. The Marine reluctantly admits she is not trained to carry out a secret operation like this and is unable to suppress her emotions. They are curious as to what Aliya mentioned to their lioness. Cruz sobs, stating that Amrohi will not be attending the nuptials, but Joe soon deduces that this is a deception and says that this is how Aliya has been programmed to behave to her father. When Caitlin learns that Amrohi will not be attending the wedding, she advises that they halt the operation in order to salvage the program. Joe, on the other hand, is unwilling to do so. Cruz also shows her supervisors the invitation Aliya offered her and claims that she told the bride she'd see Aliya in Mallorca. Joe instructs Cruz to shower and rest before departing for their destination at 3 p.m. Joe requests time apart from Caitlin since her daughter Kate arrives home that morning. Neil and Joe assist Kate out of the car because her leg is in a cast and drive her home. Kate informs her mom that she will need to be carried to the restroom and showered by her mother for the next week or two, and Joe requests some solitude with her daughter. She claims she needs to go because she has to save lives, but Kate argues being carried to the restroom and bathed isn't something a 14-year-old girl should depend on her papa for, even if he's a doctor. Joe says that they would provide for a nurse for the week, but she must go immediately, and she may not come back. Joe offers the lioness a laptop with a collection of films chronicling every terrorist act Amrohi has been tied to to date as he, Caitlin, Cruz, and the rest of Joe's squad board the plane. She cautions Cruz that everything she can observe on an eight-hour journey will pale in comparison to the litany of depravities and terrorism supported by the father of the woman Cruz loves. As Randy, Two Cups, and the rest of Joe's staff get to work preparing the food, Cruz puts on her earbuds and starts the song. Her jaw clamps more and harder as she watches each video, and her demeanor gets stronger as she discovers how much agony and fear Aliya's father is associated with. As the jet takes off, Bobby, Caitlin, and Joe debate how they want to carry out the assignment. According to the CIA's hidden cameras, Aliya has a surprise setup that looks like a massage. Three days alone with this girl, every lie you tell her she's going to remember, Joe cautions. I'm not sure. It appears like Aliya's love blindness may cause her to believe everything you tell her. Meanwhile, Joe is on his way to the White House for a briefing. Caitlin queries her husband about the meeting, and he explains that the National Security Advisor and Secretary of State may also be attending. Damn. I assume you don't want to answer to those folks. Even the job names send shivers down Kidman's spine. We're finally getting some of the answers I was pleading for previously. According to Caitlin, there is a mole in Kudra Petrol, but he is not one of ours. The target operates a type of terrorist bank, she explains. 
Her money-grubbing spouse wants the following part. According to reports, $80 million in black market oil is released the moment the CIA kills this individual. It's all a matter of perspective, he says. This person is either disgusting or the insider trade of damaging natural resources could not be more boring. After arriving to Aliyas, it's evident that Cruz isn't enjoying the massages and pampering. Have you never been to a spa? Aliya inquires. I'm weird around other people, she admits. This is without a doubt one of the worst undercover agents I've ever seen. Following their mud treatment, the two converse in the shower, steam room. Look me in the eyes and name your five best friends, Aliya commands. Don't think, just do it. Cruz doesn't say anything. Aliya breathes a sigh of relief. That's exactly what I thought, she says. We both have that in common. If you dare, answer my second riddle, now close your eyes, and name me one. Cruz responds with a smile, you. Excellent work. You're doing fantastic. However, all undercover professionals are aware that riddles usually come in thirds, and now comes the most perilous of them. Cruz, this is what Joe told you about, so be cautious. Did you have slumber parties as a kid? She inquires. Cruz meets his end. This is the ultimate challenge. Cruz responds, no, so Aliya promises to organize her first party tonight. What the fuck am I doing? Says the narrator. When Aliya exits the room, Cruz murmurs to herself. Girl, it sounds like you're having the time of your life. Back at the bunker, the CIA is bored. There's just one guard on duty at the Hamptons property, and the chats between Aliya and Cruz aren't exactly riveting. They then knock three house intruders unconscious after hearing the sound of glass smashing. They're merely some thugs that tried to loot the establishment. Kyle is sent to the residence by Joe with some hush money. Instead, they torment them. Taylor Sheridan's spy thriller spy shit introduces Freeman as Secretary of State Edwin Mullins in its sixth installment, The Lie is the Truth, and Mullins is furious. I've seen some bullshit in my time, he grumbles as he calls the post-San Antonio debriefing in an airless White House conference room to order. However, we may deduce that they are on the Senate Intelligence Committee since the CIA's involvement in kill missions and ordnance disposal on U.S. territory has culminated in its leash being shortened. Joe, Meade, and Westfield dodge additional assassination since the illegal operation was technically a success. Terrorists in Texas have enough explosives to carry off a 9-11 style attack. However, command in the final phases of Joe's lioness operation will now come from Langley's situation room. First and foremost, the CIA does not want anyone, particularly cabinet members and senators, directing it how to conduct a war. Second, it highlights what's at risk as Cruz approaches her prey. That marine is going to Mallorca, Joe says, alluding to Ali's wedding location. She's all in. However, there are only two options, mission success or mission failure. And, as we've seen before, if failure is nigh if the lioness agent on the ground is unable to murder her target personally Joe must decide whether to deploy a drone or a tomahawk missile to complete the job. Joe informs the senators that this does not make her an operative incidental damage. It forces her to make a sacrifice. A casualty of the situation. Jennifer Ely sighs in astonishment. What a lovely war. Ben blew up the fucking house to destroy the evidence. You don't get to do it here. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Mm. Mimi and Langley. Caitlin. Not another fucking ten minutes. This problem will still be here. Oh my god. In the meantime, Cruz and Ali are enjoying the finest sleepover ever. They're sharing popcorn and watching movies. The notebook followed by Paranormal Activity, an outrageous double feature. Have you seen the movie The Notebook? Aliya inquires. I haven't seen anything, Cruz claims. Cruz. Just pretend to be normal for a second. She sobs while viewing the movie and then advises Aliya not to marry Essan. Their target is the commander of an Iranian-backed militia in Iraq. In any case, the CIA is keeping a close eye on him. His daughter is Aliya. She is scheduled to marry Essan, a Saudi royal with links to the founding OPEC member Kudra Patrol. Apart from affiliation, he has shown no evidence of illegal or dangerous behavior. I need to go to the bathroom. Not much you, uh, sitting on your... Sit the fuck down! What do I mean when I say professionals? Neutralizing threats posed by us. Lucky for you. Lucky for you. I'm going to do a DNA scan. Open your mouth. Got him over there. All right, let's take... Mm -hmm.
Fucking hold your hands up in front of you! Fucking get something. Oh God, oh God, oh God. You should fucking get something, right? What if I ever see you here again? I just spoke to your families and... I think we can turn these little pigeons loose now. Okay. okay. There you go. Follow my voice. Come on, come on. You will walk forward to your car, you will get it. What about our shoes? There are. Fucking get something. Oh God, oh God, oh God. You should fucking get something, right? What if I ever see you here again? I just spoke to your families and. You, you, you. I think we can turn these little pigeons loose now. Okay. 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 There you go. Follow my voice. Cruz discovers that everything has changed when she awakens in the Hamptons. Downstairs, Alia is ecstatic since her mother has picked Mallorca as the location for their wedding. It implies that if they decide to conduct a drone strike on her father and murder everyone, it will now take place in Spain rather than the Middle East. Back at home, Joe's spouse, Neil, is on his own to care for Kate's rehabilitation from the automobile accident. Whatever you said worked, he adds, adding, but she's going to need more of you. The operation is now categorically impossible. But, in her enthusiasm, Alia eventually kisses Cruz. Alia wonders, what was that? When Cruz steps back a little. Cruz is surprised and does not answer. Well, you won't believe Mallorca, Alia adds hurriedly. Would you like some breakfast? Cruz just stares out the window, dumbfounded. It's a difficult situation to read. Is Cruz recognizing that she'll have to pretend to be in a relationship with Alia in order to stay on her trail, or is she discovering that she may have emotions for her? And how will she react when she learns that the US government wants to sacrifice her? Special Ops final episode begins at the Barcelona airport. The CIA private jet touched down and Cruz is currently on his way to Mallorca. Joe equips her with two emergency wristbands as she braces for the mission at hand. Cruz will be unable to communicate with Joe and the QRF crew since Amrohi's bodyguards will be utilizing signal jammers at the wedding. Cruz may use the wristbands to send a distress signal to them anytime she needs to be rescued. Kyle will follow Cruz until she is picked up at the airport by Amrohi's security detail. This is a follow the prize, win the prize move. And all the fucking control, and you kept working out how she works it out. President is in Paris. As we speak. Decision is to launch a strike from the Roosevelt, then yes. Of course, the value of the target. Because he moves 8 million billion people with the profits. I'm saying. Don't go far. Travel to not traveling, is he? No. He's Cruz snuck onto a flight to Mallorca, where she was picked up by the bodyguard now known as Tons of Fun. After binging eight hours of film of the terrorism financed by oil tycoon Asmar Amrohi, aka Ali's father, Cruz was brought to a meeting with Essan, who was intrigued as to why there had been so many reported tears during her and his fiance's day, night of shopping in New York. Auto missile strike on this location. She enacts a beacon. She moves. It's killing this fucking guy. With strike with the Roosevelt. If we. End. You don't know her, therefore you can't cry for her. She has never met you. So, what's the deal with the tears? He inquired. Cruz said that Alia was concerned about the changes in her life, but Essan called her out on her falsehoods before smacking her across the face. Essan vowed that after the wedding, there would be no more of you, and that if Cruz overheard this talk, he would be thrown into the effing sea. If you do, bring tons of fun, Cruz said, because I could clean the floor with your bony ass. Essan informed tons of fun in Arabic that Cruz is welcome to remain, lest an irritated Ali lock her legs on their wedding night. I bet she spends it with her legs closed anyhow, Cruz spoke in Arabic, piqued Essan's interest in the fire with this one. Joe, Caitlin, and the QRF squad boarded a boat laden with armaments and led by Tucker. They approached the wedding location and realized that they, too, were being observed. They then parked and awaited word on whether Cruz had reached her goal and required a shoreline exfil. 
Meanwhile, in Washington, Westfield tried everything he could to discourage Secretary of State Morgan Freeman, NSA adviser Bruce McGill, and Chief of Staff Jennifer Ely from scrapping the plan and pulling the lioness, in order to keep the devil we know alive, avoid volatility in the oil market, and so on. Cruz ran into Alia and the extremely cold mother of the bride. When Cruz mentioned Alia's father being present, the bride-to-be grinned, saying that danger is all around him and adding that even the American bosses of Chevron and Exxon had armed guards and bulletproof automobiles. Essan knows about us, Alia added, adding that she has probably seen the last of New York, and that soon all she will know about love will be what I recall. And she hoped you'd remember her someday. Cruz said, you're going to be difficult to forget. Doesn't know, but... You know love until you have a child. I hope I love my children. Come on. He's up that ridge and head up front. Fast. We need to move fast, fast, fast. He's here. We're not saying things. We must shut this down. He's down that hall and down the stairs. If you get hungry, what am I saying? That's it. Yeah, because you're not leaving. I'll see you in the morning. She's in a house with 30 guests and about... How am I supposed to get her out? No. Give it to me. I hate this job of fucking guest. Later that evening, Alia crept into Cruz's room and bed, and the two began to canoodle, but Cruz cut the hook up short. Cruz then went outside to breathe some fresh air before going to the kitchen to fetch some water. You don't know me. You're kind. Are you? Don't, don't ask me that. Tell me what you don't. Oh, I can't fucking do it. You want vodka? Her late night refrigerator raid was cut short by Alia's father had gone down alone, unguarded, to take a bite of the greatest gelato outside of Italy from the freezer. But just as he and Cruz were bonding, Essan burst into the kitchen, having discovered through a thorough online picture search that Alia's new bestie is, as he exclaimed, a United States effing Marine. Cruz moved quickly and accurately, hitting Essan in the face and then snatching a knife to stab him repeatedly. Asmar charged at Cruz with a frying pan, but she knifed him repeatedly. She cut Asmar's throat as a final straw, before pinching her necklace to alert the QRF crew and dashing outdoors in her pajamas to the exfil location. Gunplay ensued as a wave of guards pursued Joe and the squad as they swam toward the coast. The QRF squad arrived just in time to save Cruz and then took out guard after guard with Tucker atop the boat acting as a sniper. Cruz's first item of business upon arriving aboard the boat was to slug Joe. Inside, Caitlin questioned Cruz about whether she had struck the target. Cruz grumbled the news, which Caitlin passed to Westfield, and so to the others who had assembled in Washington, D.C. The chief of staff congratulated the deputy director. You've put back Middle Eastern relations by 40 years. Westfield told the Secretary of State, don't give me shiznit because we did our effing job. Back on the boat, Joe summoned Cruz outdoors, where her lioness delivered another punch. Joe pushed Cruz against a railing, threatening her with, we're gonna figure this out until the sun comes up. Look at what you've done to me, Cruz snarled, someone who just took out an elderly guy in his underpants. Joe said, what you did was eliminate one of the worst perpetrators of violence in the last 20 years. Says you says effing history and you simply altered it. Nonetheless, before resigning, Cruz stated, I'm not like you. I'm finished with this, and I'm done with you. Perhaps he is what you stated. But she wasn't, Cruz said as he walked away. 
And if Aliya has children who learn about what happened that night, all we've done is created the next generation of terrorists.